Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. We are on episode five of Free Dive to the Future, an ominous workout. <laughs> and last episode was pretty ominous uh, with Hiori specifically. Um, we got our connection to, I'm assuming the literary story that I was told to watch for, I'm assuming that's The Little Mermaid. I'm assuming that's the literary story, which is very fitting because it's a swimming show. Um, but that it's, I, I'm very curious because it seems The Little Mermaid is tying to Akuya. So I'm going to be very curious how that plays out in this. But last episode, uh, Mako stepped up and was going to race Hiori uh, to fight for Haru's honor for because he didn't want to swim backstroke. Um, and then, yeah, unfortunately, Mako didn't win, which you're competing against a college, you know, pro swimmer. I, what do you expect? But um, Hiori, you know, Hiori had the chance to shake Mako's hand and be a good guy about it, but... That's not Hiori. And I'll be honest, I definitely know why people don't like Hiori, especially at the end of last episode. Like, those of you that are super Haru fans, yeah, I'm sure you all hate Hiori because that was a bit out of line. Like, you didn't have to say that. But, you know, Rin's thinking it now. Ever since Natsuya came to Australia, Rin is thinking about Ikuya and Haru and his part in all of this because he's the one that kind of caused Haru to quit the team. And Haru, you know, is now thinking back on this. And we've made so much progress with Haru as a character that I don't want to see him backtrack. I'm like, I don't want to see him take two steps back. I'm like, no, Haru, you are better than this. So I'm very curious. But it looks like we're going to take a break from Haru and the gang and Hiyori and them because the preview showed uh, Iwatopi and Samazuka maybe having a training camp together, which should be nice. So hopefully we get some more Sosuke. Uh, Natsuya said he was going back to Japan. So this is the team. The team showing up for the training camp was also the team that Natsuya was helping out with. So maybe that's a chance for these other characters to intersect and connect. Six degrees of Kasumi. How can we do it? I don't know. But um, regardless, I'm really excited for this episode. I've got my bingo card. I have my stamp. I am set to go. But yeah, ah. Uh, I, I've really enjoyed this season so far, and it's it's just the right amount of angst, the right amount of fan service, and the best part is is that we've followed these characters for three seasons now, for two full seasons and through like four movies, so which is basically half a season. <laughs> like Take Your Marks is literally a, a third of a season. So we followed these characters for a good three seasons now. It's nice to see them interact in new ways and to see them in new situations. I think that's why I really like this season is because it's so fresh in terms of we're not really stuck in high school like we were the last two seasons. We're able to kind of expand and do so much more and there's all these new characters and things like that. So that's really exciting. Um, I was also told that the dark haired man, not me, Hale, but the other mysterious coach looking man is voiced by the same voice actor as Hanamichi from Slam Dunk in the original anime and Trunks, the original Trunks from Dragon Ball Z, which I think is amazing. I, what a callback. Like I, I'm watching Slam Dunk anime right now and I love Dragon Ball Z and Trunks is one of my favorite characters. So cool, if we see this guy again, I'm gonna have to pay attention to his voice and, and see if it stands out um, because Hanamichi has a very distinct uh, voice. But yeah, guys, I'm so excited. So an ominous workout indeed. This season hasn't been ominous in any way. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> but in any case, let's jump in, shall we? We are going to start episode five here. And my dog is going crazy underneath my feet. Um, but we're going to start episode five here in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Yes. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, what feels? What feels? Oh. I, oh my gosh. What I love about this episode is that it felt so reminiscent of season one and two. And I think it's because Nagisa and Rey were the focus, uh, were the two central characters. Actually, Romeo was very much the focus. Romeo and Shizuru were the focus of this episode. And then we had Natsuya and Sosuke. Um, and then... I, I can't get over how much every time Nagisa and Ray talk about like the past and we think of season one and season two, I'm like, they've grown so much and they've matured. Like that captain's meeting where it was Notori and I love that Owozumi is the vice captain. Momo, I have on this bingo card Momo becoming captain. 
I don't know if we're ready for that. <laughs> I like that Awoz Me is the vice captain. That That's a smart choice. Um, but the Tori and Awoz Me, and then seeing Nagisa and Ray be the captain and vice captain, and then the two from um, Safakin. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It just, it's so surreal. And this episode, seeing how much they matured and they have to be the leaders, and Shizuru and Romeo are like, are like basically what Nagisa and Ray were back in season one. And it's like this, this cyclical thing, and it's so cool to see how they do things, but differently. Um, like, I love the driving up there that Nagi says, like, connecting with Romeo. He's like, oh, aren't we excited? And Romeo's like, this is just like Florida when I was in America. And it's like, oh. And then Shizuru seems the more quiet type, so Ray can kind of connect with him. So I really, really like that, because I feel like in the original four, it was like Mako and Nagisa and Ray and Haru because of their personalities. But... Oh, this episode. I really like Shizuru and Romeo. I really like Romeo after this episode. Romeo is a little precious cinnamon bun. He is adorable. And I want to just, like, protect him. He's so cute. And I, I get that. I was wondering why he was so hesitant, but the whole false start thing, like, that was a neat little, okay, that because that happens, and that's a neat that that's been his fear of that happening. And then Shizuru, his family owning, like, a, being, like, seaweed farmers and him diving, and that's why he's good at swimming. Like, that's a cool thing, too. And then poor Yumu is like, there's no pudgy guys here, so I guess I'm just like, whatevs. <laughs> and then goes like, don't say that. Enjoy the muscles. So, I mean, that I really appreciated that. The man with the wave hair, him being like the their version of Momo is hysterical. And of course they're backstroke swimmers. I feel like there's such stereotypes in the show based on what type of swimmer you are. Like if you're a backstroke swimmer, you have a certain like tenaciousness about you. Like Mako is tenacious. Mako is a go-getter. He's a softy and he's a cinnamon bun, but Mako is a go-getter. Like him taking on this coaching position, he's like a go-to guy. Like he will do things and not hesitate. And the same thing is true with Momo. And I'm assuming the same thing is true with this capybara guy from Safikin. So there's the backstroke people, your breaststroke people um, have very dis have a very unique personality because you have Nagisa and then Akuya was originally breast a breaststroke guy. So there's that. And then obviously our butterfly men are the ones with all the issues, right? Or supposedly, because we have uh, we have Ray and we have Rin and we have Sosuke uh, as our, our butterfly people. And then um, uh Hiori's backstroke too, which is Hiori, Hiori's pretty tenacious. So that's true. Hiori's main thing is backstroke as well. Who is our other uh, butterfly? Who was our other butterfly? Uh, Asahi. Asahi is the other butterfly. So yeah, there, there are guys with issues. And then there's our free boys, um, Natori and Haru and Romeo, that I feel like are free spirits, but also maybe like a little insecure of themselves. But then but then they overcome it, so I don't know. I just, I like that there's kind of like a niche of personalities with everybody, depending on the stroke that they swim. But I, I really like this episode because it was just focused on the training camp. It, it's probably the first episode we've had in this season that has stuck in one location for pretty much the whole thing, except for Mako's coaching thing, which tied into the end of the episode. Aside from that, this was like the episode was all the training camp. And I liked that kind of concise connectedness throughout um of course Mako's become the had become the part-time coach and him seeing now that is going to be interesting because we're going to tie in him to now him and Haru to now and then right now we got Sosuke tying in with Natsuya and I I was afraid with Sosuke for a brief moment I was afraid that Sosuke was going to hear Natsuya's story about seeing, because he figures out it's Rin. He knows it's Rin as who Natsuya met. And for a brief second, I was afraid that Sosuke was going to be like, oh no, you're talking, Rin's talking about wanting to swim with Haru. But that's not it. Rin wants to swim with Sosuke, just like Natsuya wants to swim with now. Um, and I didn't really quite understand why the surgery was going to be such a risk, because it would seem like on the surface, you're like, well, just get the surgery if that's what fixes everything. But when Natsuya said, oh, well, if the surgery messes up, or if you don't do your therapy right, then you could be done for good. If it's not a success, then you're going to be done for good. So it's it's a gamble, and Nazi is kind of like a gambling man. Nazi seems to love a good bet, and he is not afraid to gamble money because he thinks luck's on his side. Also, I don't know. I I tried to comment in the reaction, but every a lot of things were happening in that moment when we had him in the sauna. But for some reason, Nazi has this Nazi has this kind of maturity about him that 
I'm like, they really let Natsia be the adult in this show in terms of like he's out drinking, he's kind of like just suave and stuff, and like out in the bath by himself. Like they really let him be the more mature, like, you know, Nagisa and Ray are like G rated <laughs> with Romeo, and then we've got a. Uh, Ray and Rin, I mean, we got Rin and Sosuke and Haru and them being, like, PG with, um, Akuya and, uh, Hiori, and then, like, we're getting PG-13 up here with Natsuya. <laughs> I don't know. I, it just seems like they take more liberties with this character. Something about it. Something about it is different, and I can't put my finger on it, and I'll probably, by the end of this season, find a way to articulate it, but just, I don't know, he seems like he's allowed to be the more adult character in this, um... And I'm, I've got to find a way to kind of word that the way that I want to, but it's just an observation, so I'll probably reword that somehow. But I like that Sosuke not only gets to talk to Natsuya this episode, but he also gets to be a coach because there's a lot of connections between Sosuke and Mako. Like, Sosuke and Mako are also very similar in terms of being um, the more, like, not just not stoic or quiet, but they're the more mature characters of their team. Like, Sosuke was more mature and Mako is more mature. Um, but they also have a, kind of a coaching ability. Like, Sosuke kind of was like a coach here for Romeo, just as much as Nagisa was. And he's coached Notori before. So it's kind of like, you know, if stuff doesn't work out and you injure your shoulder, he could easily become a coach, you know, if that's what he wants to do. I could see him and Mako, like, on the same path. And that would kind of be funny if maybe they did become coaches and then one day uh, Mako and him have their own teams and they're competing against each other. It'd be fun. Um Natsia calls out Mihail in this episode. He quotes Mihail and says that that's his favorite quote, which kind of makes sense now why he went to Mihail in Australia to seek advice because he kind of idolizes him. That's a neat touch. And Mihail's not always been there in Australia, so it makes sense that Natsia is just following him around. Um, but yeah, that preview that preview shows a lot of Ikuya and Hiori. So are we getting Ikuya and Hiori, Hiori backstory? I'm a hoping that we are. I'm hoping that we are. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm not going to lie. Um, I've wanted to know more about why Hiori is the way that he is, uh, especially after last episode. And this episode kind of took a break and said, you know, you, we made you all have some angst last episode. Let's take a break and have some wholesomeness. Because this whole episode was just wholesome cinnamon bun sugar. And now I'm like, okay, we've had our, we've had our, had our dessert and now it's time to go cry some more. <laughs> Which I've not, you know, felt really sad this season so far. Um. I've just been like, oh, how dare you, Hiori? That's kind of been my reaction. We haven't had, of, of the free angst that we have had, it's not been to the levels that we've had in previous seasons. It's just been more like, oh, more like shock and awe than anything. And that may change. We're only five episodes in. We're not to the halfway point yet. So who knows? But uh, let's look at this bingo card, shall we? Uh, whilst we're towards the end of this reaction. Um, I'm looking on here. The, the trees, we've not had a heart to heart under the trees. I feel we've had the bird of fate, but I'm like, trees, where have they been this whole season? It's like, have we outgrown them? Has college made us change? Um, Ray and Nagisa have a group hug with the new teammates. Yes, we had that at the very end of the relay. Nagisa was like, you did it, Romeo. Yes, awesome. Okay, um, Akuya and Haru, Kasumi. Ray did not do his fake loud laugh. Um... Do, 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 do. Mako, I'm going to reserve that Mako helps a student learn to swim. We, we know that Mako is a swim coach now, but I'm going to save that one because I'm thinking it's going to happen later. Owozumi, Owozumi and the Samazuka Chads goof off. You know, I would count the dinner scene with Momo and the Chads and uh, Safukin. I would count that. They were goofing off. All the Chads were there. Man, I am... So close to a bingo. We're so close. I've got like I've got like four down this line, and I've got like some diagonal the uh, the other way. Yeah, I'm close. And I've got and I've got some at the top too. So I'm like I'm like three different ways of getting a bingo, and we're just not there yet. Hmm. Huh. But yeah. Ah, uh, this episode was just it was really good. I. I really needed that kind of, after last week and being like, 
how dare you, sir? Um, we needed. I feel like the show was like, we put a lot on you net last episode. Let's just chill out and go back to Iwatobi. And it is so weird because it is a tone shift. And I, I noticed it so much this episode because this episode felt so much like season one and season two. Very season one-ish. And I think that's because Shizuru and Romeo are so new to the team that it felt very much like season one where they were just going to their first swim meet. They were just getting to know each other. They're like on their first bonding experience. Like it felt all fresh and new in high school. It felt very high school. And this season, since we've gone to college, has just like opened up and expanded and the world seems so much bigger and different and more mature. And it's just a different vibe. And I love it. I really like it. But this episode reminded me of what Free has been. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I'm used to. And this season has kind of, tra- and the movies in this season have kind of transformed that feeling. So it's very different. I mean, it's still good. It's just different. So, hmm. but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this reaction. Uh, I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. But yeah, next week we'll come back and uh, get some backstory on Hiyori and Akuya. Uh, I'm pretty excited. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. But in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Stay safe. Take care. And I'll be back next week with episode six of Free Dive to the Future. Bye.